Kamen Rider is a popular Japanese superhero franchise that has been around since 1971. It established what's known as the Henshin Hero genre and spawned other incarnations such as Kamen Rider V3, Kamen Rider X, and Kamen Rider Amazon. As of today, the franchise still continues in Japan and is still going strong. Kamen Rider of course had its own merchandise. It consisted of clothes, action figures, manga, and of course, video games. And if you've seen my awful games reviews of Kamen Rider Black and Kamen Rider Club for the Famicom, you must be thinking, did they ever make a decent Kamen Rider game? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. There are tons of great Kamen Rider games that followed, and I'm here to review one of them. And that is Kamen Rider for the Super Famicom. This is based on the original 1971 series of the same name. Now I'm not sure what exactly what the plot of this game is, but I'm pretty sure that anyone who follows the Kamen Rider knows exactly what the plot is. Takeshi Hongo gets captured by Shocker, they turn him into a cyborg, one of the doctors save him, he turns into Kamen Rider, Hayato Ichimonji gets captured by Shocker, Kamen Rider saves him and he turns into Kamen Rider too and they both fight Shocker and their generals. You know the rest. But I think this is based on the storyline before the whole Gel Dam Gel Shocker storyline came about. I know this I know the storyline is slightly different from the TV show, but I just don't know exactly what it says. Anyway, this game, this game is a two-player beat-em-up with Hong Hongo as player one and Ichimon as player two. Kind of like Double Dragon, where the second player has to play a different character instead of not selecting. Same with player one. Before each level begins, there's a little part of the story being told. Now. What I like about the main menu of the game is that it it's what stands out the most because it looks exactly like the Kamen Rider intro. Not only that, it plays the Kamen Rider theme song. Anyway, let's check out the game. Again, this game is a beat em up game. Now, first of all, in this game, when you're fighting, you have the ability to do a henshin move anytime you want. There's absolutely no limit to how many times you do it, which is a good thing. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! The object of the game is to defeat all of Shocker's soldiers and fight the monster of the week in each level as bosses. There are a total of 6 levels, and you can only fight in level 6 on normal or hard difficulty. Once you beat the 5th level on easy, it's game over. Before you fight the boss in each level, you, can, you come across a few Shocker soldiers, and yes, this game has all 5 versions of the Shocker soldiers. However, you also come across some of the monsters of the week while you fight Shocker Soldiers at certain points. But there are only a few of these kinds and you fight them multiple times, one level after the other. These are Kumo Toko, Saboten Guru, Hachi Ona, and Zanjio. You also fight the evil Shocker rider Riders one by one in level 6. Here are the bosses of the game. Level 1 you fight Tokageron, level 2 you fight Okami Otoko, level 3 you fight Garagaranda, level 4 you fight Ika Devil, and level 5 you fight Hero Chameleon, who is the only Gel Shocker villain in the game. In level 6, you fight all of them again, but, but there is also one final boss who never appeared in the actual TV series. I don't know exactly what his name is, but he is big and he is tough as hell. Oh, when you're in the middle of level 6, the boss's energy increases while you're fighting shocker soldiers and the boss's energy also increases if you don't kill 1 through 5 bosses again. So make sure he doesn't reach fully red energy, otherwise he will whoop your ass. Also, avoid the boomerang effectively. That gives you major damage. And always fight as Kamen Rider. Hongo is pretty weak compared to this beast, and trust me, he takes forever to kill. But but he's beatable. Don't worry, he's not hard to fight, but it just takes a while to kill. It's, he's really tough. If you can't make it, I'm sorry. And after you defeat the boss in each level, press X to see the famous Rider Kick.
Here's the ending of the game. So overall, this Kamen Rider beat em up game is actually pretty good. The only problem I have with this game is the combos. They feel inferior to other fighting games I've played such as Final Fight and Streets of Rage, which are also 16-bit. When you're fighting as Pongo, he, he kind of fights pretty slow, and plus you, you only do like, press like one or two buttons to do punches and kicks, or just one button basically. But when you're Kamen Rider, you have the ability to use the R button to use pu more punches and kicks. I think there are stronger punches and kicks, I'm not sure. But I think making better combos has to do with this SSI system that's in the beginning of the game. Um, I'm not sure what it, this thing does, but I think it has to do with the combo list. Because it says to select, and I notice Kamen Rider does all these moves and stuff. If that's the case, then I'd like to try the, this out. Nevertheless, if you're a Kamen Rider fan or a beat em up fan, check this game out. Oh, and one more thing. If you're new to Kamen Rider, if you just saw this review, I must advise you something. It, it might be cheesy to you. It might look kind of cheesy to some people, but... The, the series gets better over the years, like if you watch the the future Kamen Rider shows first, you're gonna love them. Like especially Kuga, Ryuki, Kabuto, Deno, shows like that. Those are awesome. Those are like really, really, really good. But if you watch the original Kamen Rider first, you may or may not like it. Probably due to the special effects and stuff. I mean, I know it's old, but... Even, even old or not, it might alienate some people. So that's why I'm advising you on that. Anyway, if I were to score this game, I would probably give it... Hmm. How about a 4 out of 5? That's a good score. Anyway, thank you for watching this review and I hope you enjoyed it.